Before anybody makes a comment, yes, I do know that my hair is wet, but I gotta go somewhere after. This video is for my short attention span friends who still want to learn AI. So usually when you're trying to learn something new, it'll look something like a straight line. First you learn calculus, linear algebra, probability, statistics, programming, machine learning, deep learning, etc. So kind of like that progression. Don't get me wrong, you do need to learn these things eventually. But my problem is that I can't even get past one of these subjects without getting really bored, getting stuck, and giving up. Hey, no hate, these are amazing resources. So what if it's not the resources themselves that's the problem, but the way that we use them? Is there a way that we can learn AI and not give up? Introducing the Rinnegan method. Or if for some strange reason you don't like Naruto, the concentric circle method. How does it work? So in the middle of the Rinnegan, you have the thing that you want to learn, which is AI. We go from the middle and we go outwards. So for the small circle, we just need to learn the basics of AI, such as a high level of how machine learning works, how large language models work, but most importantly, how do you use these models with Python? Don't worry, I'll go into a lot more detail about exactly what you need to learn and recommend some resources later. But the point is that you learn just enough so that you're able to build a really cool AI thing like the study tool or personal AI assistant as soon as possible. Like I'm saying realistically one month if you have zero coding experience and a week or two if you have some intermediate experience in Python. And then after you do this, we take this excitement and satisfaction of building this really cool thing and we use that as motivation to go into the next layer of the circle. We dive a little bit deeper into what exactly is machine learning, how does it work, some of the math surrounding it, which would allow us to then build something else that is really cool and then use that as motivation to expand again into the next level of the circle. So you kind of just repeat this cycle so that you're learning more and more advanced things and also getting to apply them until you become quite advanced and be able to truly understand AI models like how ChatGPT works and even build your own. So what is machine learning? Let's start with a hot dog. Do pizza. Let's do pizza. Huh? That's that's it? It only does hot dogs? No, and a not hot dog. So that was an example of machine learning. Machine learning is a way for computers to learn and make decisions by themselves by studying and recognizing patterns in data. There are many different types of machine learning models, and this one specifically is called a CNN, a convolutional neural network. By the way, I might be throwing some terminology here and there, but don't worry about remembering things and understanding. I'm just putting these here, so as you're learning, you kind of go like, oh, like she talked about this, like I'm learning this right now. I'll be explaining more about how these work later in the video as well. But first, let's talk about how Jimmy was able to build this hot dog, not hot dog model. So first, you have your little baby model that has not seen the world yet, and you gotta start feeding it images about hot dogs. But you also have to show it pictures of not hot dogs. You also want to show it some tricky cases, like this dog that looks like a hot dog, and this hot dog sausage that doesn't have a bun. I don't know if that's still considered a hot dog. Is that actually a hot dog though? Anyways, you do this many, many times, and it starts to learn what is considered a hot dog and what is not considered a hot dog. Or more specifically, what are the features that make it more hot dog-like, and what are the features that make it less likely to be a hot dog? For example, if it sees this cylindrical reddish thing, it makes a note that this is an increased likelihood of that being a hot dog. And it sees this white stuff around this red thing. And again, it will make a note that there's an increase in the likelihood of being this hot dog. It'll then come up a score with its prediction of how likely it is a hot dog. But for example, if it sees this triangular looking thing, it goes like, huh, triangles are not hot dog like. So it decreases the likelihood of that being a hot dog and so on and so forth until it gets better and better at predicting whether it's a hot dog or not a hot dog. Now let's take a look at ChatGPT over here, which is also a machine learning model. Except in this case, the data we're feeding it is a bunch of text data, like the entire internet's text data. And it uses this data to predict the next words in a sentence based upon its previous words. For example, if you have the words I am and the word sleeping, it'll give a likelihood of that being the next word, which is probably relatively high. But there can also be a word like potato, which probably has a pretty low likelihood of being the next word. So the algorithm picks the word with the highest probability and it somehow matches Logically is able to chain these together to form coherent sentences. Isn't that crazy? Like thinking about how it actually works. Of course, I'm simplifying things a little bit here. For now though, what's very exciting is that you can actually use these AI models pretty easily to start building your own AI products. Say like this AI personal assistant that's able to schedule your life and stuff. And by easily, I mean, if you have zero knowledge about coding, it'll probably take you about a month. Or if you have some intermediate level of coding, it'll take you like less than a week or two. What you need to learn first is the basics of Python. Variables, data types, if statements, loops, object-oriented programming, and APIs, which stands for Application Programming Interfaces. I 
and it's for interacting with other people's software. I'm also gonna give you some suggestions for resources. Brilliant has a super beginner friendly course, which is super interactive, which is great for people with very short attention spans. Cause you can like, you know, do the little dios and click things and things pop up. You can get started with Brilliant for free. They also are the sponsor of today's video. If you prefer video learning, there is this really good introduction to Python from Free Code Camp. And if you're into text or reading textbooks, so me personally, I'm not that into textbooks because it makes me really bored easily, but I have heard that this book, Automate the Boring Stuff, is a really good introduction. I want you to especially focus on understanding APIs and how to use them because that's how we're gonna be able to use these AI models that other people made. Next, we're gonna learn the very basics about large language models, which are the AI models that power chatbots like ChatGPT. Brilliant also has a crash course on large language models, which is super beginner friendly, like you don't even need to know how to code. But if you're into videos, this is a one hour introduction to large language models by Andre Kaparthi, who is an expert in this field. Next up, we're going to do this course on prompt engineering for developers. This course is only an hour long and is completely free from deeplearning.ai. But seriously, this is such a good course in starting to build AI products using OpenAI's APIs. It teaches you prompt engineering enabled to interact with AI models and how to connect and use the API to access the models. All right, at this point, you have the basics of building AI products. You can use OpenAI's APIs in order to build chatbots and personal assistants. You can also generate images from models like DALI. I'll also link some more APIs that you can use to generate text to video and other cool things you can do. I'll also link some examples of projects that you can build, link in description. You now know how to use AI models through APIs, but you still don't really know how they work or how to make your own. To be able to do that, it's kind of like building the foundations of the building. You need to lay a very solid foundation first by getting a better understanding of machine learning. But before we can dive into the machine learning algorithms themselves, we still need to take a step back and break it down into its subfields of fundamental mathematics, statistics, and programming specifically in Python. What you need to learn. One, at this intermediate level of Python, you need to start learning more modules that are related to data manipulation because you need to use data in order to teach your machine learning model stuff. So we need to learn the modules of NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib for data visualization, and Scikit-learn for building machine learning models. There are so many great tutorials and courses out there, and I'll link them below. Free Code Camp is probably my favorite resource. And if you're into books, Python for data analysis, I've heard is very good. Now math scary stuff. A lot of people are intimidated by math. I am also intimidated by math. So the good news is that you don't need to learn that much of math. You don't need to sit there and learn how to do like derivatives by hand. You just need to understand like the concept of calculus, the constructs of what a matrix is for linear algebra, how to use probability to determine the likelihood of something that's about to happen. These are the foundations of machine learning models. For my short attention span friends, especially I feel like for math, math is like especially challenging because it can be so boring. Brilliant is nice and interactive and it gives examples of things. So I recommend the courses Calculus Fundamentals, Introduction to Linear Algebra, and Introduction to Probability. You can also take this math for ML specialization free on Coursera if you want to dive a little bit deeper. Next up, statistics. You gotta know things like descriptive statistics, inferential statistics, hypothesis testing, central limit theorem, distributions, confidence intervals. It sounds like a lot, but it's pretty much just first year statistics in college. Again, brilliant is how I personally brushed up and learned more about statistics, but I also love supplementing with my all time favorite tech slash data YouTuber, Josh Starmer. He is very short attention span friendly because how can you possibly get bored of someone singing about math? Don't be afraid of neural networks, they're not scary. If you want something more thorough, there's a Stanford course on Coursera called Introduction to Statistics. By the way, a pro tip, especially for subjects like math that are kind of like conceptual and hard to understand, using ChatGPT as a personal tutor is literally a game changer. It can help explain difficult concepts and give analogies for things uh, where you can like use it to dive deeper into stuff. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to do that because I already made a video, which I'll link over here, talking about how to use ChatGPT as a learning tool. Highly recommend. All right, all right. Now we have truly laid a very solid foundation and we can now dive into machine learning. Yay! Machine learning as a field is very, very large and there's a lot of different aspects of it. So I only want you to focus on understanding the categories of different algorithms and some of the example algorithms out there. Stuff like regressions, k-means clustering, decision trees, etc. And understand the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. Josh Starmer is absolutely my go-to for machine learning content. I give Josh full credit for me actually graduating my master's degree because I took this really hard machine learning course and yeah, like I would not have graduated without him. If you wanted something a little bit more thorough, there's also the Stanford and deeplearning.ai course called machine learning specialization. All right, we've expanded into the next circle. <laughs> Neurons are cells in your brain. 
that form a network so that you're able to think and do stuff. Now, AI is modeled after our brains. We have these nodes that represent neurons, which create what we call artificial neural networks. If you feed these neural networks data, it's able to start learning by itself. Kind of like when a baby is first born, it doesn't really like have anything in its brain, but as it starts having more experiences, collecting more data, it's able to start learning by itself. Now, if you start stacking layers and layers of these neurons together, things start getting really interesting and you can create models that are capable of doing incredible tasks. This is called deep learning because you have a lot of layers stacked together and it's like very deep. It's an advanced subfield of machine learning. The hot dog, no hot dog AI model is a model that uses deep learning, specifically in the field of computer vision. And the AI models that powers chatbots like ChatGPT are called large language models. They also use deep learning in the field of natural language processing. Okay, so at this point, we're another layer deep and learning about deep learning. Ha, <laughs> deep learning, layer deep and learning about specializations like computer vision and large language models. Some recommended resources. Brilliant's Introduction to Neural Network covers the basics and the Artificial Neural Network course goes into deep learning. Again, Josh Sarmer is just the best. And if you wanna go a little bit deeper, there's a Coursera specialization in deep learning. Now at this point, you can also start branching out into different subfields. Like for example, you're interested in hot dogs and not hot dogs. You can dive deeper into computer vision and here's also a free Coursera specialization on it. Or if you're interested in large language models and things like that, you can dive deeper into natural language processing. Here's another specialization of Coursera. A final quick tip, okay? I do know I give a lot of different resources here, but that's mostly just to give you guys a variety based upon what kind of learning style you have. Do not, I repeat, do not try to go through all the different resources and try to like learn every single little thing and get like really obsessed with everything. Just choose one of these resources. They're all amazing. Go through it and then start building your own projects. You can build your own neural networks, contribute towards open source AI models and fine tune other people's models. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Thank you, Brilliant. I've already mentioned them a few times, especially for short attention span friends because they're so interactive. Brilliant actually only only specializes in STEM subjects so that they're able to make the best courses to teach these subjects. I personally love using Brilliant whenever I want to learn new things and brush up on different skills, especially the math and stats part. I get so bored when I try to just like watch a video or do some courses. Um, so just, you know, having those like little interactive things helps a lot in my understanding. They have timeless course offerings like math and stats, programming in Python, as well as new course offerings like the neural networks courses for the deep learning and introduction to large language models. You can join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant. Head on over to this link to get started for free. Also linked in description. If you go through my link, the first 200 people will get 20% off an annual membership. All right, that is the end of today's video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you're now interested in learning AI and if you want me to make more videos related to learning AI things. I don't know if you guys are into that. Okay, anyways, have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream.